So in the last video, we introduced the intermediate value theorem. I talked a little bit about you know, why, why this is significant and, and, and why this is sort of a tricky result to, to work with. So we're going to do an example here to show you how you might work with the intermediate value theorem. Um, before we do that, I'll mention one more um, reason why this result is significant. Um, one way of paraphrasing the intermediate value theorem is you know frequently what we do is we look at the intermediate value theorem in the context where k is zero, okay, um, and so if you're looking at k equals zero, that means you're sort of looking at sign changes. You know, so we've already seen a number of problems where we write down these these sign diagrams, these sign charts to figure out where a function is positive or negative. Um, what the intermediate value theorem is telling you is that there are only two types of points where a function can switch from positive to negative. Either it changes from positive to negative at a zero, right, because if k is zero, right, if, if, if f is negative on one side and positive at the other side, then there has to be a point in between where the function is exactly zero. Um, the only other way the function can change from positive to negative is at a point of discontinuity. Um, so if you've got a number line and you've marked off all the zeros and you've marked off all the points of discontinuity, you know you've accounted for every possible place where the function might change sign. So you know that between those points, the function can't have any other sign changes. Um, intermediate value theorem gives you that. Now, it also helps you solve equations um, by first sort of telling you that a solution exists, right? Um, some qu equations can't be solved algebraically. This is one of them. And before you go about trying to come up with techniques to solve an equation like this, you want to at least know that there is a solution. Otherwise, you're, you're really wasting your time. Um, so the first thing to realize is that anytime you have an equality of two functions, or, or numbers for that matter, right, saying that two things are equal is equivalent to saying that their difference is zero. Right? This is a, a standard kind of trick we use throughout mathematics. So this is the same as saying cos x minus x should be zero. And the reason it's useful to rewrite things like that is now we have a function. right? Rather than an equation, we have a function. We want to know where a function is zero. So Here's how, here's how you use the intermediate value theorem for a problem like this. Um, you say, OK, so here's my solution, or proof, if you like. Um, we say, let f of x equal cos x minus x. Okay. Now, we want to use the intermediate value theorem. And remember, the intermediate value theorem only applies to continuous functions. So, my proof had better include a line where I mentioned the fact that this function is continuous, right? Make sure we're, we're stating that we are aware of this, this necessity that we need a continuous function before the theorem applies. Um, so why is this function continuous? Well, we know that cosine is continuous everywhere. Um, we know that x is continuous everywhere, right? It's, it's a very simple polynomial. And we know that the difference of continuous functions is continuous, okay? So we can state that. We can say that f is continuous. Well, in fact, it's continuous on r. And therefore, on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, since it's the difference of two continuous functions. OK, so we've got the continuity part down. What else do we have to check? Um, well, we have to check that f of a is not equal to f of b. But in particular, we're doing it in this sort of k equals 0 setting, right? We want to show that this function is equal to 0 somewhere. So 0, we want to make sure that 0 is in between f of a and f of b. In this case, f of 0 and f of pi over 2. So that means we need to know that at one of the two endpoints, my function is negative. At the other, it's positive. Well, that's simple enough. We just plug those numbers in. 
So we have f of 0 is cos of 0 minus 0, but cos of 0 is 1, right? So f of 0 is 1, which is positive. f at pi over 2 is cos pi over 2 minus pi over 2. Cosine at pi over 2 is 0. So this is negative pi over 2, which is less than 0, right? So positive at one endpoint, negative at the other. We put these two together. Therefore, f of c equals 0 for some c between 0 and pi over 2 by the intermediate value theorem. And we can just abbreviate that as IVT. Okay? Um, now, maybe we should add one follow-up sentence. Uh, since f of c is equal to 0, right, and f of x is cos x minus x, then I know that cos of c minus c equals 0 which is the same thing as saying that cos of c equals c, and we found our solution.